The following story and photos are from Giant Panda King's book, Gotham 1919-1939, by Russell S. Beatty. Available from www.giantpandaking.com. Viewer discretion is advised. More mysterious than the League of Assassins was its leader. Known by many names, Ra's al Ghul, the demon's head, had been shaping the direction of history for hundreds of years. This mysteriousness surrounding him was a closely guarded secret. The name of Ra's al Ghul does not appear in history books and classrooms, but is only whispered by those used to living in the shadows. It is hard to discern fact from fiction, truth from fabrication, but there are some tales and legends that stand out more than others. One such legend is that of Endymion. Endymion was a shepherd, Aeolian in descent, whose physical beauty was unparalleled. This beauty drew the attention of the titan moon goddess, Selene. Selene petitioned Endymion's father, Zeus, to grant the shepherd eternal youth. This way she could appreciate his beauty for eternity. Another account attributed to the demon's head was that of Marco Polo. Polo referenced Hassan Sabah, the old man on the mountain. Sabah was said to lead the Hashashin, an ancient order of assassins. These accounts lend credibility to the historical existence of such a figure as Ra's al Ghul. It is unknown how many of these accounts are based in truth or fabricated for the intents and purposes of the League of Assassins. All of these tales involved an air of mystery and, in some cases, immortality. The League of Assassins held the belief that Ra's al Ghul was immortal, while others aware of their existence believed that the title of Demon's Head was passed down each generation to a new successor. Whatever the truth may have been, it was generally believed that Ra's al Ghul was the founder of the League of Assassins. The League had been shaping history and manipulating political infrastructures in West, East, and Central Asia since the Crusades. The influence of Ra's al Ghul and his League was very widespread while only being based out of West Asia. An event that Ra's al Ghul allegedly played a part in was the fall of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire, near its end, had numerous issues within and without. The Young Turk Revolution was gaining traction, and the Ottoman Empire had suffered numerous military defeats. They had lost the Italo-Turkish War, and they had lost the Balkan Wars. This resulted in the expulsion of the Ottomans from all of North Africa and almost all of Europe. It is speculated that Ra's al Ghul and the League of Assassins were responsible for helping fund and supply the rivals of the Ottoman Empire during these conflicts. This would make Ra's indirectly responsible for the events leading up to World War I, the Great War. The fall of the Ottomans and the rise of a new regime would be causation for the horrors to come. Another conflict that Ra's al Ghul may have been involved in was the Boxer Uprising in China between 1899 and 1901. This conflict was an anti-foreign, anti-colonial, and anti-Christian uprising. It resulted in numerous deaths, innocent people and otherwise, and was a very bloody conflict. The Society of Righteous and Harmonious Fists was responsible for these deaths. They were referred to as boxers by the English due to their propensity for Chinese martial arts, referred to as Chinese boxing at the time. Raish would have wanted this outcome in the boxer uprising. It would have aided his interest in Asia tremendously. These two conflicts show what exactly Raish al Ghul and the League were doing, consolidating power from the shadows. Apart from his lackeys in the League, 
Raish had other allies, ones he trusted above everyone else. His daughters, Nissa and Talia, were just such allies. They were half-sisters. Nissa was the firstborn daughter of Raish and had been the result of a night of lust between Raish and a woman he didn't love. Nissa did not meet her father until she was five years old. Her mother was cruel to her, and as a result, Nissa had already developed a cruel streak herself. This was due to the verbal and physical abuses she had experienced at her mother's hands. Raish was angry to learn of Nissa's existence. It had not been planned, and Raish was someone who liked to maintain control. Still, he had her trained and respected as the progeny of the demon's head, as was her right. Talia, on the other hand, was Raish al Ghul's favorite daughter. She was offered something Nissa had never experienced from their father, affection. Nissa always resented her sister, and when Talia and Bruce Wayne fell in love, would have loved nothing more than to kill Bruce just to spite her sister. Another of the allies of the demon's head was his most faithful servant, Ubu. A former Rashidi fighter, Ubu was one of the deadliest men in the world and loyal only to Raish. This was because of a blood pact the two had made in 1903. Ubu had been fighting for the Rashidi in the Battle of Dilam. This battle was one facet of the unification war between the Rashidi and the Saudi rebels. During the Battle of Dilam, Raish al Ghul saved Ubu's life. From that day forward, Ubu pledged himself to the demon's head. He would serve as Raish al Ghul's bodyguard for the rest of his life. With all of these accomplishments, Raish al Ghul began to turn his eyes from the Old World empires. His gaze shifted to the United States of America. In his eyes, they had proven themselves formidable in the Great War. Raish thought them to be the next power to control humanity's future. When Bruce Wayne came to Asia looking for training, and specifically the League of Assassins, Raish al Ghul saw an opportunity. He welcomed Bruce into the League, taking confidence in him more than any of his previous protégés. As Bruce's skills flourished with the League, Raish could see raw potential in the young man. It thrilled him to see such commitment, such discipline. It reminded Raish of himself. Raish could see the attraction forming between Bruce and Talia, and was secretly approving of it. He saw this union as a good thing for the League. His plan for Bruce was to have him help the League infiltrate the political and social classes of America. Upon achieving this, Raish hoped to make Bruce the new leader of the League of Assassins. These dreams were crushed when Bruce caught on to the plans of the Demon's Head. The young millionaire wanted no part of the slaughter that Raish had and would commit. Bruce did not want the life of a warlord. After a heated argument, Bruce left the League of Assassins in the dead of night, and Raish forbade his daughter Talia from ever seeing him again. Raish was himself enraged that Bruce would so readily turn his back on the League of Assassins. It lent credence to the fact that Raish considered himself almost godlike in stature compared to the rest of the League, even the rest of the world. This belief was also held by many among the League's warriors. Acting in this anger, Raish made sure that his plans for America included Gotham City at the top of the list. The wrath of Raish al Ghul would spark a bloody conflict in Gotham. The fact that Bruce Wayne had declined the mantle of Demon's Head enraged the leader of the League. Saying no to Raish al Ghul was not something that you did as a member of the League of Assassins. Bruce knew this when he left, but could have no idea what the repercussions of this would mean. It would be years after his departure from the League that the events leading up to the Shadow War would occur. The Demon's Head wanted vengeance against Bruce, yes, but he also considered himself a savior. He would not only attempt to seize control of Gotham, he would attempt to save it from itself. And if that proved impossible, he would burn it to cinders. This was part of the hubris of Raish al Ghul. He considered himself above reproach, above morality, and above what most considered the common good. Whether or not Raish al Ghul was actually immortal, he seemed to have bought into the stories and legends that claimed it was so. The months ahead held numerous horrors, tragedies, and harrowing experiences for all parties involved in the Shadow War. Lines would be drawn in the sand, enemies would become allies, and battles would be waged. And at the heart of it all, Raish al Ghul would be orchestrating this war, a deadly metaphorical chess game between himself and the Batman. 
The price of the Shadow War would be paid in blood. That of the League of Assassins, the Bat Team and their allies, and the common citizens of Gotham. Gotham City would never be the same, and the demon's head would have his day. <laughs>